Thanks. I'm going to talk about a mechanism that helps us understand the health disparities that we see in aging trajectories and those with social disadvantage. And that mechanism is chronic stress. We all know that those with social disadvantage, li their lives are embedded with chronic stressors starting from a very early age. And we now know that chronic stress ex impairs some basic mechanisms of aging. So through a stress lens, we can actually understand the disparities in aging trajectories and how early they start in life. So what can we measure in humans? We've heard about some amazing basic mechanisms of aging. There's about eight uh, hallmarks of aging that we can study in model species. What can we study in humans? In an aging cell, we can reliably measure telomere length, inflammation, and in some cases, in new research, mitochondria function. And uh, we and others have shown in caregivers, chronically stressed caregivers, that chronic stress or duration of caregiving is associated with shortened telomere length, systemic inflammation, and in our new work, impaired mitochondria function. So over the last decade, people have shown from animal models to clinical samples to population-based studies that severe chronic stressors are associated with telomere shortening in, in most cases when it's severe enough. We're not talking about neurotic stress, high perceived stress, but real uh, events that go on for years like caregiving, domestic uh, violence, et cetera. Now we've learned from these studies even uh, bigger than this effect we see in adults is that we see this relationship in children. Early childhood adversity such as exposure to violence, bullying, abuse, is associated with telomere shortening. And we know that happens longitudinally now from longitudinal studies. So we've asked, could this be happening in utero? Could a mother's stress during pregnancy be shaping telomeres in the offspring to be shorter? So our collaborative group has looked in several small-scale studies so far at maternal stress factors and telomere length right out of the gate in the cord blood. And we do see this relationship. Now, that may not be surprising, because we know that active stress processes are going to change the intrauterine environment. Maybe it's stress hormones. They affect a lot of outcomes um, for offspring, chronic stress, depression. But I want to bring up a pathway that's more menacing. And that is, is it possible that a low-income woman with a lifetime of social adversity, early trauma, with stress-related shortened telomeres is passing on shortened telomeres to her offspring through a non-genetic pathway? And the answer is, this is a highly likely, biologically plausible pathway. We know this from animal studies. Carol Greider did some of the first mouse studies on this. And we know this from human studies. And so let me just give you an example of how this happens through human, in human studies. Um, in the example of uh, people with genetic disorders, there's lots of cases of this, so let me tell you about a typical case. Mother has a genetic mutation for telomerase. She has very short telomeres. What's going to happen to her children? Some will inherit the, disorder, the gene as well as the aging phenotype. Some children will get more lucky. They will not inherit the gene, but they inherit very short telomeres and a milder version of the aging phenotype. We know this mechanism happens. This is important because the social epidemiology of telomere length, which is now in, growing and, in, um, and converging, is really pointing to early life experiences and the initial setting of telomere length right at birth as very important determinants of our telomere length in late life, which is predictive of early diseases of aging, as you heard earlier from Carol Greider. So it is possible that part of what we're seeing in these health disparities is, is the transmission, the non-genetic, epigenetic-like, genetic occult-like, there are lots of names for this, transmission, environmental transmission of short telomere length uh, from birth. So what does that mean? We're, there are several implications of what I've told you. I've told you that we can see, um, I'm using telomere length as an example um, because we know a lot about it, but we can see effects of chronic stress in a dose-response way with telomere shortening. We see the impact, particularly in children. And we think that there's intergenerational transmission. 
So this has implications for our societal interventions that I hope we can talk about in our discussion. The first is that our interventions must explicitly address toxic levels of stress. What are the social and societal policies that can address toxic stress? That is not having the bare basics for survival, food insecurity, chronic discrimination, these environments that, that make it fertile ground for violence and trauma exposure. Secondly, that our interventions, they need to focus on the, the elderly and the amaze, capitalize on the amazing social capital, but we also need to focus on what are seemingly critical periods, pregnancy, fetal development, and early childhood. So I hope we can discuss some of this.